What kind of life survives up there? On top of those volcanoes, it's about bacteria, you know, mostly. Is there something specific about that bacteria that's able to be so rugged? Yes. Um, they have adapted to very high UV radiation. And it's not only because they are at high altitude. It's because early Earth didn't have an ozone layer. Hmm. So when those, the ancestors of those bacteria originated, they have to survive a world where you had lots of short UV coming down at the surface. And also lots of hydrothermal environment, you know, volcanoes and hot water, lots of salt. And you see all this toolbox still embedded in those microorganisms today, four billion years later. It's just amazing. And depending on the environment, they are going to switch some of these defenses adaptation on or off. The UV situation there is so nasty that here you have bacteria like that, cyanobacteria. You find them everywhere. It's, it's really something you find all over the place. But if you find them here in California, they will turn their protection against UV during the day in summer, mm -hmm. and they will switch it off at the end of the day. There in the Andes, it's so nasty that that thing stays on all the time. But if you take samples and bring them back here and start to culture them, like we did on top of a building, leaving them, you know, uh, you will see the second generation of this organism. They are starting to switch on and off again. So they are extremely adaptable, extremely rugged, and that's why they are still here. And probably that's why we're here, because life found ways. So is there some degree to which the harshness of the conditions enables the flourishing of life versus shuts it down? Well, it will shut down those that cannot survive. Obviously, you know, this is a statement that's kept in obvious right there, but it's also the survival of the fittest. And this is what evolution is, right? Um, so they are here because they were the most adaptable. And so evolution is going to show the path of the fittest. The one that cannot resist, they might have a good time for a little while, but then, uh, you know, we've seen this at much different scale and with complex life. Not so long ago, 100,000 years ago, Neanderthal was side by side by Homo sapiens. Mm. But Neanderthal was completely adapted to a cold earth, to a glacial earth of the end of the Pleistocene. And when condition changed, it couldn't last. You think, I mean, there's still some mysteries around that, right? Like exact, there is, exactly but... what, what were the harshness of the conditions? Um, I still really suspicious. What did Homo sapiens do? No, 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 no. It, I it really is... want to know. No, no. I, some I'm shady stuff you. that happened. Shady stuff happened. <laughs> they met. They bred together. They fought against each other. What humans do? You had to expect that. But the thing is that Neanderthal was completely adapted for a very long time to live at the edge of those glaciers. They were probably in a weakened situation when Homo sapiens came uh, and, and, and started to spread. So um, basically, this is what life does. It adapts, and if it cannot adapt anymore, it disappears, and something else takes over. <laughs>